Let me first of all explain the basic recipe for a BMW M5. It's a four-door saloon with a boot at the back, space for five businessmen in the middle, and a monstrously powerful engine at the front. That's the main thing about an M5. It must be extremely fast. And this one, they say, is the fastest ever. So I've just pulled up alongside someone in his lightweight running gear and his AMG training shoes, whereas I am in a stout pair of brogues and some heavy moleskin trousers, which means I'm going to lose. Or am I? Cheap, heavy four door saloon just beat the sports car. That's an M5's job. <laughs> On the face of it, then, the new version seems to tick all the important M5 boxes. It's sensible, and thanks to 592 horsepower, it is Ferrari fast. But what about the turbochargers and the automatic gearbox? And what about the all-wheel drive system? Does all that mean it's no longer capable of being a swivel-eyed lunatic? No, not really. <laughs> yes, because a great deal of work has been done to completely eliminate understeer. As you can see, the steering does feel a bit weird. And yes, because the engine is turbocharged, the soundtrack is a bit muted. It's like listening to someone play the bass in the next room. But other than that, Oh, ho, 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 ho. I mean, there must be turbo lag. There has to be. But I can't feel it. And the automatic gearbox must change more slowly than it would if it were a double clutch system. But. Still. And if he's going to do that there may be a better alternative. It's made by a German tuning company called Alpina, and it's another take on what a fast BMW should be like. It costs about the same as an M5 and has a broadly similar 4.4-litre twin-turbocharged V8. It also has four-wheel drive and an automatic gearbox. However, this car was not developed at a racetrack. The boss of Alpina says if you engineer a car to be good at the Nürburgring, it won't be any good on the road. And he may have a point on that. So, instead of making the front suspension firm and racy, they tuned it to be able to deal with potholes. Then they changed the steering so it would corner more like an airliner and less like an F-16. Inside, they gave it blue dials and a thinner steering wheel and softer leather. And look at this, something you don't get in the standard M5. It's a Comfort Plus setting in which the 50-something businessman can spend his life wafting about. But don't think that the basic fast BMW recipe has been ruined. 
because it really hasn't. It actually produces 600 horsepower. That's more than you get from the M5. It has more torque, too. And there's no nanny limiter. So this will do 205 miles an hour. Does this mean, then, that on a track, the comfort wagon can keep up with the ultimate sports salute? was fun finding out. <laughs> the answer is no, not quite. The M5 is torter, more nailed down, more on it somehow. So, on a track, make no mistake, the M5 will pull away. In fact, it is doing it. We're both cats, it's just that he's a cheater and I'm a lion. If then you care about shaving tenths of a second off your lap time at a racetrack, you're better off with an M5. But for going home on the M4 in the real world, which is what I'm about to do, I'd rather use the Alpina. So shall.